Hello and welcome to today's Trader Talk from ExchangeWire. I'm John Still, ExchangeWire's Head of Content, and I am delighted to be joined by a friend of ExchangeWire, uh, Soren Dennison from DigiSeg. Soren, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for having me here. Perhaps. Pleasure to have you back. Um, I just want to kick off by uh, getting you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about DigiSeg and the work you're doing. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I'm CEO and co-founder of DigiSeg, and in DigiSeg we have segmented the internet into uh, 38 uh, household characteristics that are used uh, on buy side and on sell side in the programmatic uh, world. And uh, here today, we would like to be talking about uh, publishing and some of their uh, issues that they face, which are pretty severe. Yes, um, yeah, as Soren mentioned, we're entering a pretty critical stage for publishers. We're looking at cookie, cookie deprecation. We are looking at uh, a massive shift coming next year. And Soren's going to talk us through some of those, uh, some of those issues and some of the solutions. So yeah, Soren, take it away. Tell us about this, uh, the problems the industry is facing. Yeah, I, I, I really think it's, it's worth a few minutes to, to look at the, the whole uh, shift that is going on in the industry right now, where publishers are shifting to direct sales. And I cheated a little bit here on the board and started writing that we'll be talking about the problem first of all, and then we'll be looking at the solutions that publishers have uh, engaged with over the past two years. And of course, this is all initiated by ITP and uh, uh, GDPR, e-privacy, all the legislation. So it's a, it's a privacy topic that we're talking about. Yeah. So um, if we start out with the, prob with the problem, the main problem uh, the publishers are facing right now, uh, then, then it would be that, that they are hurt economically. So uh, uh, publishers are hurt. And they are hurt on the money. And why is that? Then most people ask. Well, um, we just did a major survey where we asked more than 100 of the largest publishers in, in Northern America and in Europe and some in Asia as well. And they say that iOS and Safari, that is uh, one of the major issues. Simply because they can't uh, you know, recognize cookies and, and track uh, consumers the way they are used to. Another uh, point, uh, or pain point, uh, would be no consent. Oh, a no. Um, and when we have no consent or iOS, the, the monetization degree drops significantly. And in this survey that we did, we found out that on iOS Safari, it, uh, it drops to an index of 26 when you have iOS Safari traffic or the user is, is uh, using these technologies. Yeah. And when you have no consent, it drops to 19. And this is compared to addressable, addressable inventory, which is the baseline 100. That basically means that you lose, you know, 74% uh, to 81% of your inventory when somebody hits the no consent button or uh, the user Safari browser. Yeah. So these are some massive figures, and this is obviously a huge issue for the industry at large at the yeah. moment. And um, what are the solutions that you are that are currently being thrown around? What is and what isn't working? Yeah. So the the solutions that have been tested by publishers, we asked that too. Uh, we see that uh, it's divided into two different categories. Either they are tracked solutions, so where you keep tracking consumers, like you like you did with the old cookie, the yeah. third party cookie. So track solutions, or you have untracked. And if we start with the tracked ones, then um, a lot of publishers have uh, have used uh, Cleanroom or tested them. So that's definitely one of them. Uh, Cleanrooms, and then we have uh, ID solutions, which is also widely used. ID solutions. And then, of course, we have regular first-party data that publishers use or, or build when, uh, when visitors come to their page. Yeah. Um, so first-party data. See, uh, in the on-track section, we see that contextual is definitely the, the breadwinner of this uh, industry in the, in the on-track section. And, uh, and here we see... Uh, 
it's like yeah, contextual providers like Grapeshot, Pier 39, so yeah. forth, that, uh, that are heavily invested in this industry yeah. and helping publishers. And, and these technologies have been around forever. But we have also been making a solution which is based on household characteristics. Uh, find this build there, characteristics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um, and this it turns out to be largely unknown by publishers, this, this whole area of yeah. data. And the data basically comes from national statistics offices. It covers 70% of the entire internet and all visitors and all impressions in the market. So it, it really, it's a, it's, a, it's a great way to put scale and, uh, and, and, and put nice audiences and build first party data. So this is what I think that we should dive into a little bit. But if we just look at, at some of these uh, issues here, for most publishers, they don't distinguish between tracked and untracked. They are mostly looking at, does it bring return on investment when I do an effort? And, um, and I think that in this privacy first world, that we ought to ask ourselves, is this, does it have longevity with it? Is, yeah. is it, is it, uh, it going to endure the increased privacy issues of this, uh, of this world? Because this is, um, sorry, this is the big danger of some of the solutions you've highlighted here is are we just rebuilding the same problem we're going to be facing again in a few years under a different name? Are we, you yeah. know, barreling our way into, uh, into exactly the same corner that we have been in for a while? It is... Um, you know, after GDPR, we, uh, we started uh, collecting consent in bulk. And uh, now, a few, a few years later, we see that a whole industry has, have evolved trying to, to, uh, to solve the ID solution. And alongside that, we have e-privacy. We have uh, increased ITP efforts by, by Apple. Uh, Google is deprecating the third-party cookie. So the problems are basically lined up, right? And it's only making it more and more difficult to monetize your inventory as a publisher. If we try to dive in into this part here, the household yes. characteristics, then I just want to showcase what can be done on a publisher's side. And if we take, for instance, uh, UK as a market, uh, here we have all of UK, all 60 some uh, million people, uh, and we could take a publisher, uh, we have a really well-known test publisher that we use in all cases, uh, publisher1.com or .co.uk or whatever. Uh, they have a certain market share of the population in in um, in UK. If we then look at DG6 uh, reach in UK, then DG6 is around 70%. It varies from publisher to publisher, um, but overall, across all the 46 markets that we are in, we offer 70% uh, reach when we overlay it on. Uh, you know, a publisher side or uh, campaigns or whatever. And this data is uh, uh, split in two. So it, it covers this part here, right? Uh, well, it covers the other part as well, but this is what is interesting for publisher number one. So the publisher gets B2B audiences and then they get household characteristics. Household characteristics. And the household characteristics that they get is uh, pretty nice demographics like income, um, children, cars, education, and home ownership, uh, building year, a lot of other stuff. Everything surrounding the household. Because let's face it, this data comes from national statistics offices around the globe. And uh, it is built on neighborhoods. And that's why we get this wonderful uh, reach of 70%. If we then dive into and say that uh, this publisher one uh, probably has uh, 1 billion uh, impressions. Uh, how do we do that? Pop. Total. Total impressions. Then they have 1 billion. Then DG6 will cover 700 million of that. And this is regardless of whether you have consent or no consent. So if we have, uh, let's say we have uh, iOS, 
a safari, then we probably have 300 million. I'm just pulling out some numbers here, right? Yep. And if we had 300 million, then we probably, then we have 70% of that, that would be 240 million covered with DigiSync data. And again, no consent. No consent. Let's say that they have 200 million. No consent, that's 20%. Uh, no consent rate, pretty normal across Europe. If the publisher have uh, 300 million iOS Safari visitors, then uh, we would cover 210 of, of those, 210 million, right? And if they have no consent, um, they, uh, if, 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 they, if they have 200 million uh, with no consent on, then we would cover 140 million of that. And a certain part of that would be business audiences, and another part would be household characteristics like income, education, and so on. And of course, that helps a lot when you look at the monetization. Yeah. Suddenly you have extra first-party data that you can put onto it. So with the no consent side of things, this is, you know, as well as the impressions that can offer, it's also kind of cleaning up the browser experience for users who are being bombarded with uh, consent messaging constantly at the moment. Yeah, well, it, it, it's the same, right? It happens in the beginning of the, of the visit, uh, but uh, it really hurts the publisher when the user press no consent. Yeah. Uh, so to all users out there, if you like your publisher, you should give them consent. Uh, but if you are really against tracking, you should hit the no consent button. So, uh, and, and, and then rest assured that uh, the publisher is still able to do something with that. And if they don't use these techniques here, they are going to end up down here. Um, so when, when we come to this, then, um, then, then most, um, most publishers then ask us, so, so what does this look like? What, what, how, how, how would we actually do an integration? Um, and uh, to, to illustrate that in a very, very basic format, then we could uh, see here flow, the flow chart of it. A user, a user visits uh, pub one com and uh, that starts a script that look up in real time nothing stored nothing saved on the user's uh, uh, device it looks up in an uh, API like this a DigiSec API it looks up the user and returns key value pairs and key values those are income 20% highest or children no children or cars, two or more. So these are the values that are then saved on site for the event. And from here, they are pushed into the ad server. And the ad server, that could be a GAM, for instance, or it could be Santa, or both, or yeah, any other ad server. And, um, and here, they would be used to, to create deals. And that's how the publisher can, can shift to, to direct sales and, and, and monetize a larger part of what they usually um, set for sale in the open market at ridiculously low prices. This is the stuff that ends up in the open market and nobody can recognize it because there are no cookies on it. And when the buy side cannot recognize it, the, 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 uh, the price on it uh, drops to uh, almost nothing. It doesn't mean that these visitors are not worth anything. No. But uh, once you have this type of data, and maybe also contextual, or if you have invested in clean rooms and so on, then uh, of course uh, it, 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 can, it can increase the, um, the, the value of these events. Yeah. And the, I mean, the key value side of things is very interesting because you have, there's a lot of knowledge there about your audience despite the, the no consent, despite it being not third party cookie related. There's an awful lot you can learn about your audience through this. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we see that that publishers they, uh, they they use this actually if we if we look at it from a sort of uh, return on investment perspective, yeah. then uh, we could we could uh, see the results of this is uh, sort of a threefold thing because it's not just adding the data and making the deals, but of course first and foremost it is it is about uh, you know upcycling let's call it that impressions. And, and by this, I mean uh, that you take uh, stuff from uh, open auction uh, onto uh, uh, 
programmatic, um, yeah, some some pro programmatic deals, and maybe it ends up as a, as an in insertion order, which is the highest, the holy grail of monetization. Yeah. I think that most publishers would agree. And and from here, you know, from the open auction, you get you get very low uh, uh, revenue from from the impressions. Here, you get uh, uh, somewhat more, and up here, you make a lot more. Then you come closer to the addressable inventory baseline 100. So you, you with this data, you, you'll be able to, to upcycle those impressions. And, and also, if you, if you look at this side here with the money, and you compare that to the solution side up here, and the cost, because those two things have to balance, right? To make return on investment, you need to, to look at what does it cost to install this. Then the clean rooms, those are pretty expensive. Yeah. So like when you go to a restaurant, you see how many uh, dollar signs do they have? Here we have three, right? ID solutions, a little less so. First party data, relatively inexpensive. But of course you lack reach because you don't have the data that is needed to, to do it. You don't have login on, on all of your events. Yes, you have logged in on the, on, the, on, on the most frequent users, and those are definitely very valuable. But you have a long tail that is just being wasted in the open auction. When you then look at the contextual, that's relatively inexpensive, right? And that's why uh, Grapeshot and Pier 39 and all the others, they're doing great right now. Mm -hmm. And the same with household characteristics. That is the same level of expense, or it's, it has more or less the same cost. So. Uh, if we compare it, um, then uh, this, this type of data here costs roughly the same as the ad serving, 0, 0.02 dollar CPM. Um, so, so that is a, a very low uh, uh, you know, cost yeah. to put onto your, but of course you do have billions of impressions, so it does add up. Yeah. But um, we see overall that uh, the return on investment should be around 8 to 10. Facts are eight to ten after everything is done. That's impressive. So, but just uh, to add a few more results here, then I would say the, the second most important gain from, from an exercise like this uh, is measurement. Yeah. <clears throat> With measurement, I mean that you can now now you made the look up on all these millions of impressions, right? And now you you are a publisher, so you you know as well that there are people who write the articles. So the journalists that write the articles, maybe it would be nice to have a profile on who reads these articles and give that back to the, to, to the, to the journalist or to the chief editor Very uh, much, yeah. to, uh, to, to have a look at uh, who is consuming uh, what, what uh, part of our, our inventory. Um, but you could also use it as a wrap-up report. So when you sell a deal, an I.O. or something other, uh, a deal-based programmatic, then um, you could uh, wrap it in a nice little uh, wrap-up report and say, we served you this many impressions, and by the way, they came from high household income, two or more kids, zero cars, because they live in the city center, and they had high education. The chance of them rebooking, because now it's not a black box what you sold them anymore. Now it's, 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 uh, it's, an, it's a nice picture that you painted for them, for the buy side. That's lovely. Yeah, it's a you know a really kind of comprehensive overview of the audience that are that are consuming your um, your work. It it definitely adds some, something to the to the game there. Last but not least, um, the the publishers uh, have been looking into uh, seller defined audiences, and with the increased use of uh, agency SSPs, uh, OMG Zero and uh, Saxis has their own and so on. Um, they, um, they, they would like to see more signals in the bitstream. And, uh, and these would be uh, seller-defined audiences. And, and this is an IAB standard. And uh, once the data is on the site here, why not shoot it into everywhere else where you could use the data? And that could be to mon monetize it in seller-defined audiences. Or put it in your DMP, if you have one or CDP, or wherever you, you want to put it in. Yep. Again, 70% of all impressions are covered with this. And it, it is first-party data, uh, or it's considered first-party data by the publisher. So they own it from there on. Fantastic. Yeah. Torrent, um, 
think that's all we have time for, but thank you so much for your insights. Really looking forward to keeping up with, uh, with what you're doing and hearing more about how the household characteristics model is working. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for watching.